Hi guys, I'm watching another video on Umon Cars. Now today's video is possibly going to be the best review video I've ever done out of all of them. Primarily because I'm about to review my favourite ever car. Yes, this in my opinion is the best car ever made. And it is the Jaguar F-Type of course. In my opinion, this car is the best out of all of them. However, there's a problem because when I talk about the Jaguar F-Type in this sense, I'm referring to the 5 litre V8 model, the one that has 550 brake horsepower and of course is the, it's called the Jaguar F-Type R. That's the one I love and that's why I think it's the best car in the world. However, this car, as you can see, is the R Dynamic model, which means that it contains underneath the bonnet a 3 litre V6 engine that produces 380 brake horsepower, goes from 0 to 16 4.8 seconds and has a top speed of 171 miles an hour. So the question is, does this F-Type, the R Dynamic model, does it still have the same like feeling, you know, that is, it, is this car all show and no go? That's the question. The key question is, is this car all show and no go? And I'm about to answer that. So first of all, let's take a look around the car and talk about the showy stuff. So as you can see, this is a 2017 car. And in 2017, Jaguar um, made some facelifts to the uh, F-Type. Of course, they changed the name from the V6S. It was called V6S before. They changed it to the R-Dynamic name. And another facelift detail is that they put LED lights on the Jaguar. Of course, it says Jaguar LED light technology. They've, of course, added these nice, lovely side skirts, which are very nice, I have to say. Very nice. They really, like, set the cut, like, Almost like bring another level to the car, it's very nice. And of course they got some splitter rear, a front splitter at the front. And that's pretty much it, yes, that's pretty much it. But um, in terms of the Jaguar F-Type as a whole car, in my opinion, it's the best looking car ever made as well, of course. I mean, just look at the curves, you can see these creases here. Look, let me just, look just look at the creases. One crease here, one crease here, one crease here. It's just designed, of course Jaguar's chief designer, who is um, Jaguar's chief designer, who is Ian Callum. He designs all these Jaguars, and he's just done a beautiful job yet again. I mean, look at the creases. Look at these lines. Can you see the lines here? Just so lovely. This line continues all the way to the back of the car, and then you've got like this floating effect. Like this rear floating effect of this car. It's such a beautiful looking car. It's so nice. Yeah. So, and then of course, these lights really help as well. Very nice lights, but yeah, this is such a nice looking car. The lines all, I mean, and there's just something about it which I just love. Um, so if we come around this side, of course, we've got the new LED lights, these 18 inch alloy wheels, which I have to say are diamond cut wheels. Very nice wheels, I have to say. Of course, red center, Jaguar center. Carbon side brakes, unfortunately, these aren't um, painted, powder coated, but they're still very nice, but very nice wheels come up along here you can see these grills although the problem is these grills are actually fake I mean put the camera here you can see there's nothing on the other side so these are only cosmetically looking things these aren't actually real but we'll cross over that shall we um, then if we come along here to the rear of the car with these as I said before this floating effect very nice then of course um, <coughs> Excuse me. Um, over here, basically, is where the air brake is stored. Um, stored. So when the car um, goes over 70 miles an hour on um, the motorway, um, the air brake basically deploys to create more downforce to the car, so it pushes the car down. Otherwise, if the car's air brake didn't open up like this, the car would be like lifted up from the front. The, the front of the car would be lifted up. So this creates more downforce, so that's why the air brake's stored here. Then if we open the boot, just quickly show you the boot. Um, yes, here we go. See the boot rises up. Of course, for a sports car, because remember the Jaguar F-Type was designed as a sports car in mind. It has got a pretty nice boot, you have to say, after a bit. It's quite a nice boot, boot actually. I mean. Some sports cars don't have really any space, but considering this has some space, it's really nice. Close that. Automatically 
closes and opens. As you can see, the LED lights. Very nice. Um, of course, it's got cameras all around. One camera at the front, one at the rear, two at the sides. Of course, the reversing cameras. Then here's a good thing. Right. If you're unsure of um, if your Jaguar F-Type is a V6 model or a V8 model, just saying, the V6 model has a single exhaust here, just one single exhaust. However, the V8 model F-Types have quad exhaust, so four exhausts here, so two exhausts there and two exhausts here. That is the difference between them. So if we come over here, if you're getting alloy wheels, of course, when you open the car, these lovely, um, door handles open and you reveal with the Jaguar logo and then you come and go inside of course so yeah and of course you've got these bonnet louvers or something yet yeah, like the side ones are a little bit fake but it's fine but yeah overall this is such a nice looking car basically the only difference between this car and a V8 car is the exhaust that's it if this is basically the same as the V8 model F-Type. So in terms of the looks, in terms of the showy stuff, it has the showy stuff. But how about the Go stuff? We'll come to that later. We'll, we'll talk about the performance stats and how it compares to his rivals later on. But now let's look inside and see what's inside the beautiful F-Type. So let's go inside now and to open the door you have to use this key which is remarkably similar to the Range Rover sports key which is parked over here, very nice car, of course autobiography black edition but yeah, the review on this car will be coming very soon, in the coming months a review of the Range Rover Sport will be coming very shortly, but nevertheless back to the Jack, okay so to open the door of course you have to use the key, open it, as you can see, like that, sorry, um, the door handles open up and that helps you to come inside so now let's go inside here step inside oh very nice a little bit of a squeeze coming inside and shut the door oh lovely we're now cocooned oh that's nice i'll put the camera here yep but it's very very nice inside in terms of the seats um these are the luxury comfort seats, not the sports seats. I would advise you to get the comfort seats, these seats, but they're so much more comfortable. It's quite low down, these seats as well, but the driving position is very nice. Um, headrest is nice as well, quite secure and solid. And if we turn the camera, of course you're faced with this view. What a view. Okay, so you've got these um, dials. Unfortunately, they're analog dials, but as you see most cars, now, like the Audi TTR, I reviewed uh, quite a few months ago, that had um, <clears throat> a virtual cockpit, so basically an all digital display. This only has the central display, but these analog dials, fortunately, are a little bit, yeah, so so, but it's fine. And you've got this nice steering wheel with a few buttons. Paddles, of course, is paddle shifts, change down a gear, up a gear, very nice paddles. Um, of course, these are all the driver controls. Then, if it comes to this central cockpit display, which is very nice, of course, you've got this like grab handle, and then we've got this Jaguar display here, of course. Where we've got the sat nav, so your navigation, music, telephone, media, radio, everything really, all on this display. And then, you've got these central knobs, of course, like air. Uh, to like control the climate, so that's climate controls. Here you've got, it's very difficult to see, but it says here auto, like front, um, heated front, windscreen, rear windscreen, that's of course, yeah, the hazard lights. Then you've come down here, you've got this gearbox, of course. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm losing my voice, by the way. Um, very nice gearbox, of course. It's of course a dual clutch system, so park, reverse, neutral, sport. So lock into that way, it's sport mode. Um, start, stop button. Love a car that has a start, stop button. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Um, this of course controls the um, navigation systems. Uh, 
This mode is quite interesting. This is the, um, if I can find it. Yeah. This mode turns dynamic mode, so that's like the fastest setting the car can go. Gives like sport mode and dynamic mode. That's the maximum like power you're getting from the car. <clears throat> of course, this car, by the way, is a rear wheel drive car, not the all wheel drive car. And in my opinion, the rear wheel drive car is the better pedal out like that. Primarily, primarily because it um, just has more of a characteristics, more character than the um, all wheel drive. The all wheel drive is a bit plain, simple. The rear wheel drive is just a hooligan, hooligan really. It's lovely. So, yeah, as we can see here, um, dynamic mode and also some wet, icy conditions. Trash control off, lovely button. Exhaust, now this button um, boosts the exhaust. If you press that button here, it, um, actually, no, actually no, no, that's not true, because if you press the button here, it quietens down the exhaust. This loud exhaust is so loud, the crackles and bangs, another reason why it's such a good car, it's just um, so loud that Jaguar have actually have to implement a button here that turns the exhaust down. Um, then we've got the parking brake here, of course. Yep, you can press that. Um, but yeah, overall, this is such a nice cockpit. The feel of it's very nice. <clears throat> yeah, of course, this has a Meridian sound system as well. As a Meridian, which is very, very nice. All you can do, you don't need any loud speakers and like um, sound systems. The Meridian sound system is perfectly fine. But yet, there's one problem with this car. Yes, I have spotted a problem. It's in all F types, not just the V6 model. It's this. The rear um, visibility is poor. Look at that um, C pillar. You cannot see anything. Like, I can't. What can I see there? Nothing apart from the flower pot. But nothing. Look at this. It's all like boxed in. The problem is, it's you can't see anything from the rear. So it's very difficult to like operate um, like uh, um, like junctions, T junctions. It's gonna be very difficult. So that's a negative. The second negative is that I've heard that the um, riding this car is a little bit firm and harsh. In my opinion, um, it's uh, I've seen like people say it's quite firm, harsh, and um, that's better. Kind of, firm, harsh, and just like uncomfortable. But I think it just suits the characteristics of this car. Really, if you're a comfortable car, go for a Porsche Cayman or I mean, no, no, go for a Mercedes SL or something like that. For F type. It's more about the sportiness than the comfort. Of course, this layout is a GT layout, but it's more of a sporty feel. But yeah. Anyway, that's the inside of the Jag. Let's go outside to summarize. But yeah, I'll leave you with this, actually. This panoramic roof, an option, of course, and a glove box. In fact, yeah, this is the um, owner's manual, but put it back. But yeah. Panoramic roof, an optional extra, I would advise you to get it because it just makes the car's cockpit more open and just much nicer, in my opinion. But anyway, let's go outside now and summarise, but yeah, this definitely has the showy stuff inside as well, in terms of all of this layout, design, carbon fibre stuff, the quality of the materials, the, like the feeling, like buttons, they feel very secure, solid, it's very nice. Anyway, let's go outside now to summarise. So now, overall, so let's summarise now. So we know this car has the showy stuff in terms of the interior, the looks, everything really, but how about the goey stuff? Is it still a fast car? Of course, the F-Type V8 model, the R Coupe, is very, very fast. But let's see, how about the V6 model? So, the V6 model car. As I said before, um, let's take top speed. It has a top speed of 171 miles an hour. Of course, it's not electron ele electronically limited compared to its German counterparts. So, in terms of the Mercedes SL and the Porsche 718 Cayman, where those two cars are pretty much its main competitors. So, 718 Cayman and the um, SL are its main competitors. Their top speed is 155, unfortunately. So those, their top speed is electronically limited to 155 miles an hour. The Jag isn't. Um, another thing is that the power, as I said before, is 380 brake horsepower, of course, from the 3 to V6 engine. However, its rivals, like the SL, has only got 367 brake horsepower, BHP. And the Cayman only has around 350, actually. Only 350 for the Cayman. 
So yeah, that really does show, even, oh, even though it's a V6 engine F-Type, it's still faster than its main rivals, the SL400 and the 718 Cayman. Um, we'll take something else then. Um, okay, the 0 to 60 time. 0 to 60, as I said, 4.8 seconds on the F-Type. In terms of the Cayman, that's uh, 4.4 seconds. Um, the Cayman's 4.4 seconds and the SL is 4.9 seconds. So yeah, SL and Cayman are slower than the F-Type. Remember, that's basically those two cars' its main rivals, of course. When the Jag came out, it was aimed to target at the SL, basically the comfort of the SL, but the sportiness of the Cayman, of course. And I think it matches them both. Really, I think it does. Um, in terms of the V6 model I'm talking about. Um, it's very comfortable inside, the seat's very nice, the positioning of the interior, very comfortable. Of course the SL is a tad bit more comfortable, but it's still very, very nice. Um, the Cayman, um, it's quite sporty the Cayman is, but um, I think the F-Type still with its dynamic mode, the S mode, 380 brake horsepower, not the measly 340 that the Cayman has. It's much more um, powerful, so it covers. It's basically the best of both worlds. It has the comfort of the SL, but the um, power and the sportiness of the Cayman. So, in my opinion, the Jaguar F-Type is the best of both worlds. So, is it all show and no go? That's the question. Hell no. It is all show and all go. It's fast, comfortable, and um, just beautiful to look at. So, everything like the VA model is still fast. Not as fast as the V8 model, but still, it's very, very fast. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Stupid cat. Anyway, that's pretty much it. So, thanks for watching, guys. It is all show and all go. Phenomenal, phenomenal car. Still, the F-Type is my favourite car in the world. And for me, um, it's bye-bye, and same for the cat. So yeah, make sure you subscribe if you like this video. Um, please like it. And um, make sure you stay tuned for plenty more content to come from Uman Cars. Plenty more reviews and plenty of um, events as well. But yeah, F-Type V6S, the R, um, R Dynamic model, it's still a phenomenal car. Thanks for watching, guys. Cheers.